back again. Said I would cover. What's the game? I'm sorry, I'm tired right now. I've just been at work since one in the morning. Um, payday three. But I actually want to cover this first. I will get to payday three more than likely after this video. I'm gonna get right into it first. Again, whoever happens to be watching, let me know if this voice effect sounds annoying, or if it sounds good, or if it doesn't bother you one way or another. But if it sounds bad, I'll just stop using it. I think it sounds cool, but I'm not the one necessarily listening to this. So it could make it unlistenable. But with that said, let's get right to it. One second. All right, let's get right to it. Lords of the Fallen. Elden Ring 2.0. I don't know, but I've seen the trailer for this. I haven't watched this entire video but I've seen a shorter trailer looks amazing let's go welcome to Mordstead a prominent region within the vast and sprawling world of Lords of the Fallen in today's extended gameplay walkthrough we're sharing an exclusive look at just some of the diverse and harrowing areas you'll journey sick. through in your epic quest to overthrow a deal Demon God. Now, my introduction to Souls games was I played the very first one for about 30 minutes, got my ass kicked sometime after the first boss, put it down, and never played again until Elden Ring. And of course, I played all the way through Elden Ring, beat it. The game was amazing, it looked amazing graphically. This looks even better. Souls games aren't necessarily known for their graphics. They're known mainly for the gameplay. But this looks amazing. This is Skyrest Bridge. It is guarded by Pieta, she of the Blessed Renewal, one of the game's early boss encounters. We must triumph against her in order to proceed with our holy charge to restore Look at how this world looks. Six beacons of the sentinels. And this comes out in, in September. September. I forget the date. Maybe September 25th or something. I could be wrong. But this looks sick. Look at that. A betrayal made flesh. And one I cannot broke. Melee, magic, and range. Okay, he is huge. Seamlessly interwoven. Alongside standard attacks, you can choose between catalysts, bows, crossbows, or throwables, mapping up to four additional magic or range skills to your controller for immediate access. This rapidly speeds up combat and reduces the need to swap between options. Definitely has that classic Dark Souls feel. Not the stun. As with any of the imposing bosses you'll attack while they're stunned. Yeta has two very distinct stages. Oh, are you millennia now? Death is not necessarily the end in Lords of the Four. When slain in Axiom, the realm of the living, you'll resurrect in Umbral. Realm of the Dead. We oh, know. so that seems kind of similar to a mortal shell. Took me a second. Where when you die, you get knocked out of your shell and you have a chance to run and go get back into your shell, but you're severely weakened. You pretty much get one shot by any and everything. And it's kind of your second chance to, to get a second win, so to speak. Um, final chance to survive.
I can't wait to play this. And I wonder how long it's going to be. Oh, there's a significant, significant amount of hours in this game. But I definitely want to spend some time on it. Funny, all these crazy looking games are coming out next month. And Blizzard just dropped the ball with Diablo 4. can spawn a resting point, known as a vestige seedling. These come at a significant resource cost, however, and they can only spawn one at a time. The realms of Axiom and Umbral exist in parallel. Each Very much souls inspired. Enemies, characters, and, of course, treasures. We can now use this crafty vestige to return to Axiom. No, for one reason, this makes me, and this is completely random, but this makes me want to play Sekiro Shadows Die twice. I have that game. That game just kicks the shit out of me. I cannot beat that game. I'm pretty sure I've beaten about 10% of that game. But this makes me want to play that. Surprise, mother... Night, night. I've been playing Bloodborne. I haven't beat it yet. I've gotten somewhat far. That kind of reminds me of some of the enemies in there. Just pop up out of nowhere. We can peer into the secondary Ooh. realm at any time by raising the Umbral Lamp. Though be advised, this also renders you vulnerable to its inhabitants. That's pretty sick. We will now use the lamp to cross over to Umbral. Though doing so will consume one of our two lives. And it isn't so easy to return to the world of the living. I wonder if that lamp is something you get at the beginning of the game or you have to unlock. Oh wow. Many enemies require a different approach to combat. This mendacious visage, for example, is only vulnerable when attacked from the back. Or there's a stone face. It's true form. That's nasty. Look at the lighting. Also come across permanent vestiges on your travels. As well as using these to return to Axiom, you can also level up your stats at these locations. I'm just trying to decide which console I want to get this for. Three schools of sorcery can be mastered. Rugar, Radiant, and Umbral. Each special Ooh, look at this character. different area of the arcade and requiring a different catalyst to cast. Our current build is a debt in Rugar, characterized by devastating pyromantic attacks. Of course this isn't out yet. This isn't out yet. And you know, in a lot of ways, the state of gaming is just trash, especially when all these companies are just trying to make money. But when you see stuff like this, it really gives you hope. I hope this game ends up being great. I hope it doesn't have any kind of microtransactions the same as Elden Ring didn't. I hope it blows 
all the other games out of the waters as far as single player games. I wonder if this actually has a multiplayer element. I just can't wait for it to come out. Sorry, I'm responding to texts. Dude, this looks so good. Don't know why, but that character, that, that, boss or character that she just fought or he just fought whatever kind of reminds me of Voldo from Soul Calibur look at this look at the lightning look at the lighting it's raining it's dark look how good this looks if the gameplay matches how good this actually looks. Oh my goodness. Cannot fucking wait. save point some long range fireballs As a lamp bearer, all players are equipped with a devastating ability, the Soul Flay. By using oh. all of a limited number of soul charges, we are able to extract the very soul of an enemy, ready to inflict significant damage. Oh, so I was right when I said she earlier. Well, you gotta be careful now. Pronouns. I mean, this isn't all the way my real voice, so I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna find the back of his head. Jesus! He's wearing like a spiked bucket on his head. So I'm sure this is going to operate just like Souls games, just like Elden Ring. That's my best reference. I forget what the things are called. Call me a noob. Draw an enemy. Earn a bunch of them. Blow, uh, fire, sight, campfire. And uh, put those points into your character. Jesus, I sounded like such a noob just a second ago. The Soul Flay ability can also be used to manipulate the very environment when in Umbra. Mm.
It's a big ass axe. Big heavy ass axe. Knock him off. Night night. Keep laying off. There we go. I wonder if the control schemes are going to be similar. Elden Ring as well. We now find ourselves in Lua Calra, an ever-burning district renowned for its displays of barbarity. Oh wow, so the whole town got raised. That's set on fire for the uninitiated. You're a bad joke, I know. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Got a bow and arrow. I just can't get over how good this game looks. Join us on our journey. This is easily achieved at any of the vestiges. You can choose to fight alongside a friend or a randomly selected player. Either way, your co-op companion will remain at your side for as long as you or they choose. Oh, so there is going to be multiplayer. As a radiant sorcerer, our ally is able to buff either character with various enhancements. Oh, yeah. That just gained about 20 cool points for me. Beat his ass. We called down lightning. the difficulty of this game is going to be. I want it to be challenging, but I don't want it to be impossible. And I felt like that's where Elden Ring was at. Not too easy, not too hard. I wonder if Quantum TV is going to play this game. <laughs> He's going to give a review on it. Is that ice now? It appears our way is blocked by an umbral entity. We will need to track its tendrils in order to locate and expel source of its power. Finally, it's time to face off against the colossal spurned progeny, Scourge of oh. the Wrath. Oh god!
This dude is huge. So do you guys think this is going to be like the first boss on Elden Ring? Got with all the arms. Sorry, sorry about that. Had a technical difficulty, but I was saying, do you think this boss is going to be difficult? Like uh, the very first one on Elden Ring? Dude with all those damn arms. What do you guys think? How, how, how difficult do you think this this first boss is going to be? That arm came out of his mouth. Oh, October, Friday 13th, October. Okay. Definitely a game to look forward to. Looks amazing. Hope it turns out amazing. Hope it does not disappoint. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Looking forward to it. Do you care at all? Do you not care? What do you think? The second time I'm going to let a video play through like that. Anyway. Guys, hope you enjoyed the reaction. And next video I'll cover will be Payday 3. Thank you. Peace out.